The following video is part of my DMVPN from Basics to Scalable Networks webinar. To learn more about my webinars, please visit my website. The next step from phase one, we have MGRE on all the routers, hubs and spokes. Multicast still flows only between the hub and the spokes, but the data traffic starts can flow spoke to spoke. HRP is now used for two things. First, for dynamic spoke registration with the hub, and for on-demand destination resolution. When the spoke tries to talk to some other spoke, it has to ask the hub where the other spoke is. Now, if you want the spokes to talk directly, their routing table has to point to other spokes. So when you consider the routing protocols, you have to remember that the next hop must be the egress router. The next hop must be the other spoke, for example. Which in OSPF terms means use OSPF type broadcast. For EIGRP, disable split horizon and disable next hop processing. And you can't make DNVPN phase two work with RIP because you can't change the next hop processing. Now, Assuming that the routing table on a spoke router is set up properly and next hop is the other spoke. What happens is when the packets start flowing, the shortcut is not yet in place. So the spoke sends the packets to the hub router. And until the shortcut is fully operational, the packets go through the hub. So even if the spokes can't establish a direct IPsec session, you don't lose any packets. You just overload the hub router. Then as the packets start to flow, the spoke router tries to set up a shortcut. So it uses NHRP and asks the hub router, excuse me, what's the IP address of the other spoke? As it gets the reply, it installs the mapping for the other spoke into its dynamic cache. Then it tries to set up the IX session with the other spoke to exchange the keys, set up IPsec session with the other spoke, and when the IPsec session is up, the NHRP entry becomes operational. And at that time, the spoke can start sending traffic directly to the other spoke. And of course, this NHRP dynamic mappings expire. So if there is still some traffic close to the hold time expiration, the spoke will send another request to the hub router. And it will send the request to the hub router at whatever registration timeout you have configured before the dynamic NHRP mapping expires. This thing happens independently on both spoke routers. So if you would have unidirectional traffic flow, only one of the spokes would use the shortcut. But obviously, because usually the applications have bidirectional traffic flows, the same thing happens on the other spoke router and now you have a bidirectional shortcut. By the way, even though you establish shortcuts independently from both ends, only one IPsec SA is used. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session or buy a recording, please visit my website.